Good day and welcome to today's conversation. Our guest today is Isal Lewitz. You are so welcome. Thank you so much. Please tell us more about yourself. Emerentia, I am, as you say, I'm Isal Lewitz. I am a regional education manager. I oversee a, a learning center of a nursing college in Pretoria that is part of a private hospital group. And I'm also looking after 11 hospitals in terms of the training that happens there, the CPDs for permanent staff. So nursing education is the area that I specialize in. That sounds wonderful. And it also sounds like a huge responsibility. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Education is a responsibility because we are educating the people that will look after patients tomorrow. Yeah, and, and, and keeping the people abreast with what is happening now and developing them so that they are um, ready to nurse our patients safely mm. um, in our hospitals. Wonderful. Thank you. Please tell us about your view of presence. Emerentia presence is being there in the hospital with our patients but it is holistically how do we view a patient holistically by communicating with them by touching them by being there active listening um, when a patient talks to you um, they always say nursing is a caring profession mm -hmm. but if you think about it Nursing is a present, is a present, is when you're present with a patient, and that uh, sets us apart from the other multidisciplinary team members. Because if you're present, it is when a patient experiences that you are really caring for them. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, we have seen that a, a lot of people these days experience nurses as uncaring. Mm -hmm. But I believe that people are tired. I believe that dilutes presence in a hospital when you are tired and you are not engaged with your patients. Mm. And I think a very important thing is, is that nursing is a very routine-driven um, uh, profession. Mm. It's in the morning you hand over at quarter to seven. At 10 o'clock, the vitals has to be done. Then it's the intake and output. Then it's the medication. And because we are so routine driven from one moment to the next, I believe that presence is diluted. Because if you have to, if you just do something over and over and over, you don't have to engage with that. Mm -hmm. And I believe it is then when we make mistakes. It's then when patients feel uncared for that we don't communicate effectively. Mm -hmm. And then it's then when our presence is not functioning um, uh, uh, functioning at a 100% level. Mm. So you are saying important things and saying that when people or nurses are tired, presence is diluted. And I like the word that you use, diluted. And also when we do routine tasks. So I wonder, what your thoughts are on reviving presence or un, is it undiluting presence? <laughs> <laughs> it is so easy to come up with, with solutions for the people working in hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that so often we bring things in uh, as a way of, of, for instance, I'm going to give you an example. We believe that 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 uh, nurses do not report vital data that is um, not within normal range. Mm. So what we do is we develop an early warning signs chart to make sure that if the early warning signs um, of a patient is not within the normal limits, that it's being reported and actioned. In other words, we are taking away people's presence more and more by giving them tick lists mm. and not allowing them to evaluate the situation and to be responsible for the actions that they take in a specific uh, moment. If people are accountable 
held accountable. Um, they will be, they should be in the moment because they will know that their actions mm -hmm. has a certain responsibility, right? Um, if we include tick lists in a hospital and say, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? It is a mere routine task mm -hmm. again. And people tick lists and they move on to the next thing. All right. Um, uh, if, you know, it's, and it's very difficult if we, if we do not train people to, on, on what presence should look like. Mm -hmm. because presence for me and you means I engage with a patient I touch a patient I listen to him and I'm be I'm, I'm there mm -hmm. but not all cultures embrace this presence in the same way mm -hmm. another thing is that um, if nurses traditionally sit down they are seen as lazy mm -hmm. The moment that they spend time with the patient and not run, running around in a, in a unit, uh, doing all the tasks that is expected of them, they are, brand, they are, are, are branded as the lazy person sitting around talking to patients. Mm -hmm. And we haven't allowed that for many years. And it's a culture within nursing that we have to change to make sure that we connect Mm. with the people and you cannot connect with a patient if you're not present mm. um, a while ago I, I'm involved with a with a platform the nursing improvement platform we had a, um, a workshop on patient connection and how you connect with a patient mm. in only 56 seconds we mm. actually asked people if they were willing to go and implement it in their hospitals and they did. It only took 56 seconds to engage with that patient. And the feedback that they got was that the patients were, were um, felt secure. Uh, they, they actually shared confidential information with the nurses. Remember, if we get people that share confidential information with the nurse looking after you, you can assess a patient better, mm -hmm. which has an influence on the clinical outcomes of the patient. Mm -hmm. However, the flip side of the coin was that the nurses that was doing that 56 seconds were, were labeled as, as, as time wasters and lazy and sitting down with the patient. It was, it was not only uh, even a minute. And yet the outcomes obviously outweighs Mm -hmm. This labeling, right? Because if the clinical um, outcomes of a patient can be influenced um, by your actions and by spending a few minutes with your patients, surely it's worth your while. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. I think we should hang this, what you are saying now on the, on the flagpoles all over the country. It's so important. The flip yeah. side and the, the benefit side. And it's amazing that it can happen in just under a minute. And yeah. also that it's so sad that nurses are being labeled as lazy. So sure, it's a profound. And it's so easy to teach people that. It's easy to pe teach people to, to engage uh, within 56 seconds. Would you like to know what we actually taught them? Yes, please. We taught them to say good morning. What is your name? My name is Professor Duplessis. What would you like me to call you? I prefer Emerentia. All right. So that is, and they, and you can say, well, I am Isa. All right. And there's a few moments that you spend with the patient and you sit down next to the patient's bed just for a few seconds. And then you make the patient feel secure. Mm -hmm. You ask, you tell them, what I'm doing now is I'm quickly uh, greeting you. Then we will fetch all the breakfast. You'll have breakfast. The doctors will do their rounds during the morning. And by 10 o'clock, we're going to give you medication. Just that. It makes them feel secure because they have no control over their situation, right? And you give a bit of control back to them. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the patient and you see that he's reading a book or he's drinking water. And you look at his environment and you're saying, I see you were reading a book about Wilbur Smith. 
I also like reading. Sure. So I'm going to go, but when I come back and you establish that security, I want to tell you about the book that I'm reading. That's it. And you move on to your next patient. You always create a moment and you tell them, I will come back. And when I come back, I see you drink a lot of water. I want to tell you, I started also drinking water, a lot of water. When I come back, we're going to talk about water. Mm -hmm. There's always a connection and a bond that you form with a patient. 56 patients, or 56 seconds mm -hmm. on a patient means that that patient might have a better clinical outcome. And we underestimate connecting and communicating with a patient and the effect that it can have on this precious life in front of you. Wow, now that's excellent. Thank you for that wonderful work you are doing and please continue with that. I think it's going to be able to make a major, major difference. I Thank you so, so much. Yes, I can just testify when I am in a patient role or visiting the hospital or anywhere, what you are saying now will make the world of difference because I haven't experienced that as a patient and I felt lost. I felt a burden but if so, one of the nurses just said that to me it would have made a difference so please continue doing that That's thank you so time. so much thank you so much yeah. so. thank you for sharing that and I'm also wondering if you have experienced moments of presence in your experience as a professional nurse and a nurse educator Imrisha thank you so much um, I would like to share an experience of years ago. I was still working as a clinician in the hospital and I was working in the high care unit. And when I walked in there, I was working as a locum sister for that day. Now, traditionally, we like to give the patients that is seen as difficult to the agency nurse. <laughs> and I walked in and they said, well, we're going to give you a patient, but this patient is difficult. She had a back operation. Her pain is out of control. We found a doctor. Nothing works for this patient. And I said, it's fine. I'll take the patient. And I went to the patient, which was a, a, a patient that was, was monitored very closely hourly in the high key unit. And I, and I, and I introduced myself to her. And I said to her, um, I want to look at your pain because your patient's uh, priorities has to be met first before we start with the routine of the day. And I saw that her pethidine pain injection was due. And I called someone and we turned the patient and I said, oh, I said to her, we're going to turn you now and I'm going to give you your pain medication. As I was turning this patient, I evaluated her reaction. And she was so scared. She grabbed onto the rails. She said to me, um, no, 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 I mustn't do this and I mustn't do this. And I, I saw she was taking charge of her own situation. And yet she wasn't able to do that. Isn't it when we do nursing, we say when we hold the lamp, when we are nurses, we say that we will be the eyes and ears when you, of your patient, when your patient is at their most vulnerable. And at the moment, I turned the patient back and I said to her, all we're going to do is we're going to increase your comfort. I would like to turn you more often. But here's the thing. I am going to be the sister working with you today. And I would like you to trust me because I have the best interest at heart for you. And she was still stressed. And I said, I'm here for you. And I said that to her. I held her. She didn't look at me at all. She was looking in front of her, but I was there for her. And the thing is, we, they must know we are there, but we are also there. You cannot say, I'm here for you and just uh, disappear. You have to show them you are there. You, you are well looked after. I turned that patient. It was 7 o'clock in the morning. By 10 o'clock, her family came in and said to me, but something 
is different. Last night, they couldn't get her pain under control. And Emma Rensha, seven o'clock that night, I went home and she didn't take any other analgesics throughout the day she, because I turned her. Mm. I told her I'm there for her and she could relax. Mm. Because sometimes people want to take charge of their own situation, but isn't it that we have to be there mm. and make sure that their needs are met? A very same thing happened, but that was with the visitors of a patient. In the COVID pandemic, my team and I from the college had to go and work in the COVID units because it was all hands on deck. You know that nursing staff was, uh, uh, was scarce. They were sick. Some of them were sick and, and the units were full. And I was working in ICU. You know what was the biggest thing in terms of presence during COVID? People were tired. Remember, we spoke about being tired. If you're tired, you cannot engage. Mm. When you're tired, you cannot take someone else's needs in, above yours. Mm. All right. And the nurses were tired and they were emotionally uh, uh, drained because of all the deaths that we faced. Mm. And the hardest part was the patient's family wasn't able to come in and visit the patient. Now, the question is, how can we create presence mm. if the visitors are not there? You cannot create presence if someone is not there, right? Mm. I want to tell you that's wrong. I remember we nursed a very, very sick patient and his family members who I found. And what I did was I tried to recreate a scene so that she could feel she's with her husband. I took the phone, it was a roaming phone, and I went to the patient and I stood in front of this ventilated patient and I said, ma'am, I'm standing in front of your patient and I'm uh, your, your husband and I'm looking at the monitor. And what I'm seeing at the monitor is the following. I'm seeing this is the blood pressure. And we are doing this for the blood pressure. He's ventilated like this, we have done this, We've just turned him on his side to make sure that his skin is intact because we want to look well after him because that creates security for her. And isn't that that when we look after a patient, it is everything relating to patient care. And that includes the patient's family, mm -hmm. especially at a time where they're unable to come to a hospital is to be there for them and be their eyes and be their ears so that they can feel that they are in control of the situation, although they aren't. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for the work you are doing. You are really an excellent role model of presence and connecting and really caring and creating a safe space. So thank you so much for that. Thanks for the examples. And I'm you. sure you are a positive influence where you work. So. Thank, Thank you so much. Yes. What a privilege it is for us mm, as nurses to be there mm. for someone when they cannot speak for themselves. No, definitely. Yes. Right. And being an advocate in mm. that specific situation, it is, it is for me, it is a, an honor to, to do that for yeah, our patients. Yes. What you also made me aware of is that we need to really have compassion with nurses who are tired and to really also look after them and understand that they cannot always engage as we want them to. And uh, we need to really also just be, uh, be merciful and have grace for them. Yes. I know that you are involved with projects, your own study and also you mentioned the nursing platform please tell us more about that at this stage i'm doing a phd on communication relating to patient care mm -hmm. presence and communication relates so well because communication is active listening it is communicating with a patient sometimes in a very difficult circumstances or just on basic routine communication. Because 
as we um, said, it has an influence on the patient's clinical outcomes. Mm. If you are communicating well with a patient and you engage with them, you can assess them so much better. Mm. You can assess the patient better. And, and if you read on presence, it's the same thing. If you are present, you can assess a patient better. Mm. When I can communicate with a patient and I assess a patient mm. so much better, then um, the outflow of that is, is that I can escalate challenges and um, change in condition so much quicker mm. or if I can to communicate with my patient well it means that they will listen to my advice and if they listen to my advice the clinical outcomes can be influenced by that mm. so we are really busy I'm, I'm really busy with the PhD um, the Nursing Impl uh, Improvement Platform is a platform where we drive, um, it, it, we call it a movement because we want to create movement in our nursing fraternity where we, um, where we make sure that the best evidence are presented, where we can ensure that, that um, nurses are empowered to do the job that they want, uh, that they have to do, but so much better. Um, the thing is, evidence change daily, and we want to make sure that our nurses are on top of the game. And that is also part of the function of our nursing improvement platform. Yes. Wonderful. All of yes. the best and many blessings with your study and with the platform. You are making a huge difference, and please continue to do so. Thank you so, so much, and thank you so much for having me here today. It's a huge pleasure and it's really a privilege. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and I'm looking forward to continued conversation and really to um, hear what you are busy with next. Thank you so much, Emerencha. Thank you. Thank you.